YouTube official gaming network and welcome to episode 31 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode we implemented better rendering performance into our game. This episode we're going to be implementing coopers into our game. Now uh, like implementing pipes this is going to be the two-parter because I'm busy again. Uh, tomorrow I'm actually going to go to my the school camp. I have to leave really early which is uh, also why this video is uploaded earlier than usual because I'd rather upload this video early than uh, having it like three days late. So yeah, because I'm really busy uh, preparing for my school camp, uh, I do have to make implementing Coopers a two-parter, but uh, hopefully you guys won't mind that. So yeah, anyway, let's get started. Uh, before we start implementing Coopers, I actually found some bugs that I want to clear up. So. Uh, as I said in my last episode, I lost a lot of code because, uh, you know, the files corrupted and I had to, like, retype everything again. And, uh, yeah, because of that, uh, there's still, uh, things I need Im to implement. Uh, the pipes are mostly finished. There's just one bug I have to clear up with the pipes and, uh, my mini boss I have to implement as well. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly fix the text problem that... Uh, you probably saw when I ran the game and you saw the launcher. Yeah, that was just a simple math problem I just need to clear out of the way. Alright, I'm just going to quickly test if that works. Yep. So anyway, uh, one of the bugs is that... Let's just run that game here. Alright, and as you can see, uh, the, like, the Goomba sprite, the coin sprite, the power block sprite is in here because uh, I really can't be stuffed to making graphics at the moment because not just because I'm a bad graphics artist is that really because uh, the code to this Mario project is more important than the graphics to me at the moment so anyway let's go down the pipe as you can see everything starts to disappear and that's because you know how we implemented better rendering performance last episode where there's this rectangle that follows our player and uh, any tile or entity that's out of that rectangle doesn't get rendered. Yeah, anyway, because our camera doesn't move with the player and our player's going down, pretty much what happens is that we, we see tiles that are out of the rectangle, so they're pretty much not rendered and they disappear. So that's what we're going to fix right now. Yeah, I'm just fixing a little pipe bug here. I forgot to type in. So you have to fix that. Uh... We're going to create two private integers. The first will be called player x. Actually, we need to make them static, and you'll see why in a minute. So the first will be called player x, and the second will be called player y. So now we'll scroll down to our get visible area rectangle method. And uh, we're going to make our if statement where we're checking our entity is uh, equal to id.player. We're going to give that a body and before we return a rectangle, we're going to set player x equal to e dot get x and player y equal to e dot get y. And in our return new rectangle line, we're going to change e dot get x to player x and e dot get y equal to player y. So you might be thinking, well, what difference does this make? Oh, we haven't made a difference yet, but we're about to. So, in here we're going to make another if statement. We're going to type if e dot going down pipe is equal to false, then uh, we'll just give that a body, and we're going to copy all the code into here. So what this does, this these lines of code only get called when we're not going down our pipe. If we are going down our pipe then uh, Java will pretty much skip this code and go to return null, but we can't really return null because that will give us errors. So what we will do is that we'll copy this line of code, every bit of it except for return, copy it, and paste it. 
So uh, this line of code will only get called when we're going down a pipe. And before we went down a pipe, we actually set our player x and player y variables that were our x and y before we started going down our pipe. So we'll use the coordinates we were at before we started going down our pipe for our rectangle here. So when we're not going down our pipe, our rectangle will stay where our player was before we went down our pipe. So now everything should work. Let's run our game. Okay. It shows our lives. Okay, uh, there's our little Goomba here. It doesn't really do anything yet, but anyway, we'll go down our pipe. And as you can see, uh, the rectangles don't disappear and it stayed there like it normally would. So now we're going to fix the second bug. Uh, let me just demonstrate this bug to you right now. It's a jumping bug. You might have realized this when you were testing the game, but pretty much we can double... Well, we can't really double jump, but if we press W while we're uh, falling, then this happens. We start to fall down really fast. And... The reason why is because, uh, let me show you in our key input method because that's uh, where and why the bug actually occurs. As you can see here, this code only gets called when jumping is equal to false. So you might think, oh, to fix this bug, we'll also put and en.falling is equal to false. So we can only jump when falling and jumping is equal to false. But the thing is, I have no idea why this happens, but we pretty much fall forever. Even if we're hitting the ground, we're technically still falling. I have no idea why this happens. I might fix that up in the future, but it's not too important at the moment because I'm about to fix it another way. So if we try to jump, we can't jump because we're technically still falling. So the best solution was to remove this Ian.falling and deal with that like a really fast falling down. But I don't really like that. So, to fix that, well, the truth is, uh, you should already have a, a Q4 loop here for when we're going up a pipe, but I don't because I said uh, my file corrupted, I had to retype the code, so I'm just going to quickly paste this into here. I'll just remove the t.getID is equal to id.pipe for now. In the if statement, uh, make sure the if statement we're about to type is below the t.getID is equal to id.pipe if statement, otherwise things will go wrong. So... Yeah, we're checking if t dot is solid is equal to true, so if our tile is solid. And now we're going to check if our players get bounds bottom rectangle intersects the tiles get bounds. So dot intersects t dot get bounds. And uh, if you haven't figured it out already, we're going to pretty much make our player jump whenever we're colliding with the ground. So. It will just copy this if en.jumping is equal to false if statement. Well, really cut it. Paste it into here. And uh, we'll run our game. See how everything goes. Alright, so if we try to jump while we're falling. As you can see, we can't. We fall like normal. And uh, yeah, we can still jump and everything. And uh, yeah, we can only jump when we're colliding with the ground. So now we're going to get into our Koopa. In our mobs package, we're going to create a new class. Of course, we're going to call it Koopa. And because it's an entity, we need to make it extend entity like usual. Import entity. And uh, of course, add the constructor and the unimplemented methods, which is the render and tick method. All right, just remove the comments we don't need. And uh, I actually uh, got a color here, like this little light green color we can use for the Koopa instead of like me making a sprite because I'm busy I don't have time to make a sprite so I uh, just uh, picked a color and uh, the color was I think 3922751 uh, you can use it if you want it gives you a nice light green color and of course we need to fill a rectangle the x and y coordinates being our x and y coordinate get x and get y and our then the width and height of the rectangle will be our Koopa's width and our Koopa's height. Because our Koopa will share similar behavior with the Goomba when it's walking and it's like non-shell or anything, we're going to go into our Goomba class and uh, shamefully copy the whole tick method and uh, paste it into here. And we're going to uh, copy these lines of code. 
where we're just setting our Goomba to walk a random direction and paste it into our Koopa's constructor. And we get an error because we're trying to use a variable called random but that doesn't exist. So to fix that, we'll simply just create a quick random object, set random equal to a new random in our constructor and import random. By the way, my house is a little loud at the moment, so I apologize if you do hear any background noise like uh, people walking past the door or like talking, things like that. So now uh, we're gonna make our Koopa actually spawn. So we're gonna go into our handler class and uh, where we add a new Goomba entity, I'm just gonna lazily change uh, Goomba to Koopa. So it spawns to Koopa instead of a Goomba. We need to import a Koopa and uh, let's run it. Alright, we'll run our game. As you can see, there's a Koopa instead of a Goomba. Really, it's pretty much technically like a Goomba at the moment, except that there's no collision detection. Well, there is. We need to set the ID equal to ID dot Koopa. And because Koopa isn't a constant yet, we'll uh, click create in and constant Koopa in ID, or you can just type one in yourself. So yeah, pretty much our Koopa is the same as our Goomba at the moment, just store with no collision detection, as you can see here. We can't jump on him or anything. And I'm sorry this uh, episode didn't cover the whole process of implementing a Koopa into the game, but as I said, I'm really busy preparing for my school camp. Like, I, have, I still have to do some packing and organizing and everything. So, yeah. I do apologize for that, but uh, next episode will definitely cover the uh, rest of the Koopa and uh, the end result will be more interesting than this episode. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment and subscribe. If someone you know is interested in learning how to program in Java, please send them this tutorial. I would highly appreciate it. If you have a Twitter account, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. And don't forget to suggest what topic you want me to cover in the next tutorial. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.